Coming up next, find out what a two-year investigation reveals about Pennsylvania's dams. Plus, we have an update on State High's football field renovations. And we're going to take a look at the brand new Student Veterans Center that's being built right here at Penn State. The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Zach Kaplan. And I'm Courtney Guyry. Thanks for joining us. A two-year investigation by the Associated Press has identified more than 1,600 dams nationwide considered high risk and in poor condition. Reporter Aaron Neary looks into how Pennsylvania is affected. Pennsylvania has nearly 3,400 dams, including this one, Sayers Reservoir near Howard. An Associated Press investigation identified more than 1,600 dams nationwide that are considered high risk because they're in poor condition. More than 700 Pennsylvania dams are among those considered high hazard, meaning a structural failure could lead to human deaths. Sayers is not one of them. But three local dams are Rockview Reservoir near Pleasant Gap, Kephart Dam near Phillipsburg, and Penn Nursery Dam in Milroy. All are considered high hazard, according to the AP report. These high-risk dams are required to have an emergency action plan in place, which most in the state do. Somewhere a little over 95% of those do. Um, we're working with the remaining, you know, owners of the remaining 5% to, to get their plans completed, um, which has been a, a large improvement, I'll say, over the last 10 years. There is no national standard for inspecting dams, and ratings are subjective and can vary by state. Pennsylvania's Dam Safety Division regulates dams here. To find out if a dam is in the high-risk category, you have to go to Harrisburg and request an informal file review with the Office of Dam Safety. The state says this is mainly because of the threat of possible terrorist attacks. That's also the reason cited by the federal government in refusing to include dam conditions in its inventory. Pennsylvania's dam safety program increased funding to $2.8 million last year, the second most in the country. A state program has issued 19 grants to fund $50 million in projects. But dam owners still have limited funding to work with. I can't say that, you know, um, an influx of funding would be needed, you know, for the program as much as it's more so needed for, for owners of dams to, to do actual construction work or fixes to facilities. That's, that's really where, um, you know, where the benefit would be felt the most. I'm Erin Neary for the Center County Report. Governor Tom Wolf's proposed infrastructure plan for the Commonwealth would also steer additional money toward upgrading dams. The parents of Penn State student Tim Piazza will be in State College this weekend as part of their End Hazing Now program. Their son Tim died nearly three years ago after an alcohol-related hazing incident while rushing a fraternity. His parents are making efforts to reform university Greek life. Penn State has opened the Timothy Piazza Center for Fraternity and Sorority Research and Reform. Jim and Evelyn Piazza hope the center will make an impact on universities around the world. I guess the larger goal is to get more and more schools to join in and then um, do research projects. Uh, one of the first ones I know they wanted to do was deferred recruiting. They're doing research uh, as to how to make, you know, fraternity and sorority life better, safer, um, you know, Hopefully, you know, they can figure out the whole sexual assault issue that goes on and, and uh, you know, hazing, obviously. The Piazzas will speak Sunday at Penn State along with a family whose son died in a hazing incident at LSU. Steep settlement costs continue to rise for Penn State in the Jerry Sandusky case. The university's annual audit report showed during the last fiscal year, Penn State paid about $100,000 to one or more people who claimed Sandusky assaulted them. The school has now spent $113 million in the settlement cost to people who made abuse allegations against the former coach. Sandusky is due in court next Friday for his resentencing. Police are asking for the public's help in investigating a hit and run in State College. They say this vehicle was driving on Locust Lane on October 27th around 12.45 a.m. They say the driver failed to stop at a stop sign before turning onto East Beaver Avenue, hitting another car, and then taking off. The suspect's car may have front end and passenger side damage. If you have any information, please call the State College Police. Medical marijuana sales in Pennsylvania have now surpassed half a billion dollars. Since the legislation of medical pot in 2017, 174,000 people have been certified to use it. There are 72 dispensaries operating statewide, and the average purchase is around $120. Close to 60% of the demand is from patients with pain or pain-related conditions. 
The multi-million dollar renovation project continues at Memorial Field and State College. Reporter Dylan Huberman checked in at the site to see how things are coming along. Memorial Field is undergoing some serious renovations. The site was a sinkhole more than 100 years ago and even used as a dump. They've been playing football here at the Hollow, as it used to be called, since the 1930s. This new project is on pace to finish in August 2020, just in time for football season. It'll even have a new name, Memorial Stadium. Retaining the historic location while also keeping up with the demands of high-level football were priorities in the decision to renovate rather than relocate, according to the school district. They'll have both the charm of playing downtown in a historic stadium, uh, but also have modern amenities, the modern facility. According to the district, the cost adds up to more than $14 million. Moving to a new field could have cost even more. Memorial Field has been a fixture for State College High School football for some time now. However, according to head coach Matt Lintel, it can always get better. I'm super excited as a coach to, to gain the, the learning facility uh, within the stadium and to be able to have whiteboards up there, uh, teach tools and, and video access uh, that we can get in that locker room, uh, not just game days, but, uh, but practice days and, and turn it into a classroom as well. A state high grad himself, Lintel says he's happy this will remain the home of Little Lions football. Although his players are locked in on their upcoming playoff game, they are more than aware of what's coming next season. The kids know what's coming. Uh, they're excited about that opportunity for sure. In State College, I'm Dylan Huberman for the Center County Report. The Little Lions have played their games this season at the South Track behind the school and expect to have the new venue ready for next season. With Election Day now over, State College is still looking for a new mayor. There are now officially 13 candidates interested in replacing Don Hahn. He was elected to the magisterial district judge and will resign his mayor's job on December 16th. The interim mayor chosen by the borough council will serve the final two years of Hahn's term. And speaking of politics, day two of the public impeachment hearings against President Donald Trump continues today in Washington. On today's agenda is testimony from a career diplomat about her firing and what led to it. The hearings are centered around a phone call Trump made to the Ukrainian president back in July. Trump allegedly urged the Ukrainian president to look into his political opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden, and his family in exchange for military funding. On Wednesday, the top Ukrainian diplomat said he was told Trump cared more about the potential investigation about the Bidens than Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Trump has been fighting back against the allegations. I'm too busy to watch it. It's a witch hunt. It's a hoax. There shouldn't be anything. There shouldn't be impeachment hearings. Trump's re-election campaign raised more than $3 million on the first day of public impeachment hearings this week. Coming up next, see how the community is celebrating veterans this week in our area. And find out about an event that's showing high school students of color the benefits of a college education. Also coming up, a landmark local shop is moving to a new location. The Center County Report continues after this break. Welcome back. This week, people around Center County and the nation have taken time to honor veterans who've served our country. Reporter Katie Park takes a look. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in the veteran community that not people are very aware about. And, you know, recognizing them can help bring these issues to light. Like, we so a lot of people suffer like PTSD and a lot of veterans go homeless after they, you know, uh, come off, off service. So, you know, anything that is able to help them out, like, Better. They we great. We really greatly appreciate that because you know they're fighting more than one battle, rather than just overseas. They're also fighting a battle here back at home. Center County paused this week to honor the men and women who have served and sacrificed for our country. Veterans Day ceremonies were held locally, including at Penn State's Old Main. Along with saying thank you for your service to a veteran, having a conversation with them makes a difference. Penn State has hundreds of student veterans at its University Park campus including former student veteran Eugene McFeely. Get to a deeper level than just that, you know, to have a conversation. And I think really just talking to our service members as well as our veterans about their experience. Penn State's Military Appreciation Week wraps up tomorrow with veterans honored during the football game at Beaver Stadium. It's very important to have strong connections between the military, those who have served, and the community that we serve overall. And so military appreciation is our opportunity to do that every year. More than 5,000 Penn State students have direct military ties as either service members or military dependents across the state. And right here behind me is Penn State's brand new Student Veteran Center, which will become the hub of activity for all student veterans here at Penn State. While construction won't wrap up until next spring, a ribbon-cutting ceremony is set for today. 
in University Park. I'm Katie Park for the Center County Report. Thank you, Katie. The ribbon cutting is this afternoon at the Rittner Building on Penn State's campus. It is not open to the public. New numbers show Penn State's enrollment remains stable. Total 2019 enrollment at all levels across the university was down 0.7% from last year, and there's been a big increase in students from underrepresented minority groups. The Student Minority Advisory Recruitment Team, or SMART, held its annual Spend a Fall Day event at Uni University Park this week. The event invites minority high school students to Penn State for a closer look at what college education can offer them. Over a dozen multicultural organizations took part. It's because a lot of events at different schools are not really geared towards minority students. So for us to have our own event where the information is geared towards us, the students look like us, our tour guides look like us, you get a, you get a better perspective on the school. The latest numbers show Penn State had a 21% year-over-year increase in the number of students from underrepresented minority groups enrolling at the university. A local family-owned business is moving to a new location after 43 years. The old main frame shop and gallery in downtown State College is moving to Ferguson Township at the end of the year. The shop specializes in framing projects for artwork and diplomas. The new store will be at Ferguson Square on West College Avenue, about a nine-minute drive from its current location on East College Avenue. The owners say the new location will be more accessible and offer free parking. They plan to open in early January. Good afternoon, I'm meteorologist Matt Urasavic. Looking live right now over Beaver Stadium, not a cloud in the sky. It is a bit chilly. We are in the 40s at this hour, and we will be in the mid-30s tomorrow as Penn State takes on Indiana here at Beaver Stadium. 41 right now at this hour. It feels like 36 because we have a west-northwest wind about 8 miles an hour, so it feels a little bit chilly. We were in the 20s this morning, but we're finally up toward 40 degrees across most of the state, especially up here in Bradford, still in the 20s at 29 degrees. And over in Philadelphia, they're a bit warmer at 50 at this hour, but most of the state, with the exception of our southeast, will hang around in the 40s for high temps today. Looking at radar and satellite, not looking too bad. There's not much on it, just a few clouds there in the northwestern part of the state, but no showers or any rain in the forecast, at least for this weekend. But that will change as we head into next week. Our storm system already gathering itself together down here off the southeastern coast, and it will kind of remain there and kind of stall out as we head through the weekend because we do have a blocking high pressure up to our north. That is a very strong high pressure and that will be what is driving our northerly winds tomorrow and filtering in some cold air there tomorrow for the football game. Temperatures only in the mid 30s. As we move this along, we can see our high pressure really just kind of moves just a little bit to the northeast up toward Maine. So it's still in place there and our low pressure has not moved much at all. But that high pressure will weaken as we head into the day on Monday and that is when we could get some showers back into our forecast. Looking right now though, today 45 will be our high temperature, mostly sunny skies with a west wind of 10, 5 to 10 miles an hour. Then tonight we will head down to 21 degrees, just a few clouds in the sky though and the winds come out of the north which will keep tomorrow's temperature feeling a little bit chilly for Penn State's football game. If you're heading out early to tailgate, 27 degrees will be your early morning temperature. Then around kickoff we'll head up to about 31 degrees and then Towards the second half of the game, about 34 degrees, so you will need a jacket, maybe a hat, and even gloves tomorrow if you're heading out to Beaver Stadium to cheer on the Nittany Lions. Quick look at your seven-day forecast. It's not looking too bad this weekend. Temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. No rain in the forecast, but then as we head to next week, we see some showers there with our storm system on Monday. Some clouds hanging around on Tuesday before and Wednesday before another Low pressure system may move in on Thursday, but temperatures next week back up into the 40s. So game day starts in the 20s and really doesn't get that much further than that is what you're telling me. Oh, that's un that's, unfor much. that's unfortunate. I'm but happy this it's just not going to rain or snow. The yeah, cold, no, no I rain in the forecast. hope we can handle. It'll be a sunny day. The cold is fine, just the rain, no can do. Mm -hmm. No can do. There's still a couple of uh, Penn State sports teams who are playing outside, however, and we'll send it over to Brian McLaughlin, who has the latest on that with sports. Thanks guys. Penn State men's and women's soccer both have huge games today as they advance in postseason play. That's next in sports. Also coming up, State High prepares to take on Delaware Valley in the state football playoffs. We caught up with the Little Lions as they get ready. I'm Brian McLaughlin with sports. 
Penn State football will play at home tomorrow for the first time in almost a month as the 7-2 Indiana Hoosiers come to town. Zach Kaplan stopped by practice to see how the team hopes to rebound. As Penn State football suffered their first loss of the season, they now have to turn around and face a pesky foe in the Indiana Hoosiers. Facing criticism for a lack of execution and play calling last weekend, head coach James Franklin knows the team has to maintain focus. I mean, obviously when you have success and you win, you're more confident, and when you have setbacks and you lose, it challenges that, but uh, we got a resilient group of guys and a resilient coaching staff, and. Um, although we need the time to prepare Saturday, can't come soon enough. The Hoosiers will be without starting quarterback Michael Penix as Peyton Ramsey will test Penn State's secondary. Safety Jonathan Sutherland says his unit has to step up after being shredded by Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, we know Indiana's going to come in here and throw the ball because they're, you know, they're a passing team, they're a passing offense. Um, and, you know, we've, prepared, we've been preparing for that all week with um, the scout team's been doing a great job giving us the right looks and all that. So... Um, from the mistakes that we learned from this past weekend. The Lions believe their goals still remain viable, including winning the Big Ten East and the Big Ten Championship. But they'll require a win Saturday out of a big road trip against Ohio State. In University Park, I'm Zach Kaplan for the Center County Report. Kickoff is at noon, and you can listen to the game live on Penn State's Com Radio. Now to high school football. After taking care of Erie McDowell last week, the State College Little Lions have advanced to the next round of the playoffs, which take place tonight. Our Dylan Huberman watched them prepare for their meeting with Delaware Valley. It's been a rewarding year for State High. They head into their 12th game of the season with a 10-1 record, including last week's win over Erie McDowell in their playoff opener. Tonight, State College turns its attention to Delaware Valley, which has an impressive 11-1 record. But despite the pressure of the playoff stage and the sub-freezing temperatures, tight end and linebacker Stevie Guthoff says Coach Matt Lentell is focused on preparation. He's been getting us in the weight room. He's getting us full pads on, even though it's cold out here. You know, I mean, this house going to be on Fridays and Saturdays from now on. And we know that um, we got to do whatever it takes to kind of keep our pads on, and we're going to be fully ready for that. State High spent part of its practices outside and the other half inside because of the cold. However, defensive captain Kevin Kurzinger says that nerves won't be a problem for him, literally or figuratively. No, not really. You just have to love the game and play the game like you would any other. You can't let it get to your head too much or else you won't play the way you want to play. At the end of the day though, Herzinger and company know what's on the line tonight. This is the game you have to win in order to be able to be in the talks for the championship game. Tonight's game is at Hazleton High School and kickoff is set for 7 p.m. In State College, I'm Dylan Huberman for the Center County Report. Other area playoff matchups include Bald Eagle against Bedford in the District 4 bracket and Belfont takes on Cathedral Prep to take the next step toward a District 3 title. Both are also scheduled for 7 p.m. kickoffs. It's game day for Penn State men's soccer, which is moving on to the Big Ten Tournament semifinals. The Lions opened the tournament with a 3-0 win over Wisconsin last weekend. Penn State has not dropped a match in eight straight contests and now sits at 12, 2, and 3 on the season. They take on number 3 Michigan in College Park, Maryland this afternoon. The winner will play either top-seeded Indiana or Ohio State in Sunday's championship. Women's soccer kicks off the NCAA tournament tonight at home after a win against Michigan in the Big Ten championship. The Nittany Lions won a 2-1 in overtime after Sam Coffey tied the game in regulation on a penalty kick. Peyton Linehan buried the winner for Penn State. The win gave Penn State its record eighth tournament championship. Penn State is a four seed in the NCAAs. The Lions host Stony Brook in the opening game tonight at 6 at Jeffrey Field. You can listen to the game live on Penn State's Com Radio. Penn State hockey hits the road for the first time this season to play Minnesota this weekend. A split against Michigan State dropped the Nittany Lions one spot in the polls to number 8. They enter the series with a 7-2 record. Clayton Phillips, who transferred from Minnesota, has his first chance to play his former team. He's coming off a two-point performance in the second game against Michigan State. Guy Gadowski thinks Phillips is ready for his return to Minnesota. I did hear him say, you know, he said to me once, he goes, yeah, I wish I could have done a better job, and I'm hungry to prove that I can. That's, you know, he's a very classy kid. He has no ill feelings towards any individual or or the program at all. So I think it'll be nervous for him, but I'm, I'm excited for him. Um, he's, been, he's playing very, very, very well. Face-off for tonight's game is 8 p.m. 
After coming off her first win as the Lady Lions head coach, Carolyn Keeger and her basketball team matched up against Fordham Wednesday night. Saya Frazier led the team with a career-high 19 points. She also had 10 rebounds and 5 steals, while guard Kamaria McDaniel set the tone in the first quarter with 9 points. Penn State shot 75% from the field and held Fordham to only 35%, winning 72-59. The Lady Lions secured their 950th win in program history and will stay at home for their game against LaSalle on Sunday. And a quick note, Penn State men's hoops had a big win last night at Georgetown. They're now 3-0 on the season. That's all for sports. Now back to you guys at the Anchor Desk. Thanks, Brian. Coming up next, an annual event kicking off the countdown to the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The Penn State community celebrated this week as Wednesday began the 100-day countdown until Thon 2020. The annual milestone event took place in the hub and included performances, speakers, fundraisers, and hair donations. The event finished on the lawn where the annual human photo, where hundreds of students stood out to spell the word light, signifying the light that guides people in the search for a cancer cure. The annual Penn State Dance Marathon raises millions of dollars for pediatric cancer patients and research. That's all for today's newscast. You can find more of our stories on our website, centercountyreport.com. And you can follow us anytime for breaking news on our Twitter feed. That's at centercountyrep. We're on our Facebook page. We also have a Center County Report Instagram. Join us for our next newscast on Tuesday, but have a great weekend, everybody. We hope you enjoyed watching the video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you did. For the rest of our newscast and featured stories, click here. And for sports, click here. Have a great day and thanks for watching.